Hello, this is FRGH Racing, and I'm going to be going through an, uh, a more advanced tutorial on how to make a variety of um, physics based copters without using anti gravity. Um, also, working on visuals and other concepts to quickly get into the building for machine craft. I understand there's not a lot of tutorials out there, so this will probably be one of the more advanced ones. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with general building, um, I would recommend watching the the promotional tutorial to actually build things, but this is going to go much more in depth with the physics and making more advanced constructions. So the very first thing you should do with any machine craft is go on out over here and uh, where is it? I think it's under this. Get expert mode checked off. Uh, maybe auto backup. I mean, actually, um, I find this to be unnecessary. I've never had an issue, so uh, I'm actually gonna take that off right now because it just it takes up space. Um, all this stuff is optional. This is something I highly recommend. I would never recommend this. This is really annoying um, for sculpting and. I'm not too sure what this is all about, um, but oh yeah, okay, I know what that is. When you undo something, it'll snap the camera to the, look at the last changed part, and it's actually super annoying. So I would actually recommend this too. I just haven't really looked into it for a while. Um, so first, I'm just gonna take this out and show you what this thing is capable of. This is a fully physics-based flyer. A helicopter so what that means is it has inertia components that move so when I want to move left or, or forward and back I have a a wheel in there that uh, moves front to back using inertia to balance it and then also left to right these counter rotating blades um, I can change the speed of them so that I can yaw left and right and then I can also take off because this has variable pitch blades. So then that's on medium, that's like light, and then I can turn it up, and there you go, I go a little bit faster. And also go into camera mode, and I can fully fly this thing using uh, all the controls I assigned to it. Doing some acrobats, I can turn it down, I can also land very softly, so let's see if I can get myself on that pad and right here coming in for the landing and I exploded because you touch the ground and you explode so there you go success um, so we're going to go right into it and how you can achieve this. So you go to your create. Uh oh. Uh, let's hope I didn't. Yeah, alright, good. New machine. Let's call this copter test. Alright, and we're going to go right into build mode. So, the first thing you need is your core. Um, and then we're just going to, you know, let me place some things. This is going to be really simple. I'm not going to worry about the aesthetics until later on. Also, make sure you actually look at your arrow. Because it can be annoying when you build things backwards. Even though there is a feature for flipping stuff. We'll go into that a little bit later. Fantastic. All right, so let's just get a little chassis going. This is, like I said, it's going to be very simple, um, but it's just going to contain all the concepts that you'll need to know to build this. So the first thing you need is your rotator speed 
instead of angle. So what this means is um, it'll rotate at a particular velocity when it's set to a value, which we're going to get to in a minute. Um, and so we place that, I would actually say place another one, because you'll see why in our yaw control, uh, we'll need this in a bit. Another thing is you're going to have to have a block. And then I would grab another one of these by middle clicking. Um, have another velocity thing. And then another cube. Alright, we'll, we will assign all these in a minute. So, hold tight. Rotator angle. This will be a three part thing. So, like I said, we're going to do the copter first. We're going to do some aesthetic building next. And then uh, I have an advanced suspension system that we can set up as well. So, you can go for more off road kind of builds. Um, and then so you can fully understand how to really get into the game. Actually, you don't need these. I usually do a second set, and you'll see why it allows for more fine tuning. Uh, but they stack. So remember, if, like, say I had this one rotate, this would. If this was set to zero and this rotated, the whole thing would rotate. So they do stack, so you have to consider that when making these. And then the next part will be the yaw control. Or not yaw control, um, roll. Now, you saw my stuff very close together. Uh, how you can achieve that is by grouping them. So you hit the 5 button, and you can pick different cubes by hitting Q, of course, your inventory, and assigning a different group. So I'm going to first go to 1, place my cube, and I have like a circle kind of thing. I don't have to be perfect, of course. And then so that this doesn't touch the rest of this, so it can rotate separately from this, you group it separately. So you're in group mode, and you hit uh, Q, and now you're in a red group, and then you kind of just select what you want in the group. Now this particular build, I would not recommend mirroring it. And mirroring it will mess up all the settings that we're going to do here. Um, however, like cars and tanks and other stuff, you can mirror perfectly fine. Um, so we'll just kind of go with that. Uh, and then the next thing is the is the inertia uh, pitch control. So what I mean by that is these things contain weight. Uh, this is a big mass of weight, and this game heavily calculates inertia and mass forces. So, if you rotate this in respect to this, it'll create a torque, um, causing the whole thing to twist um, in the opposite direction this is spinning. So, if this is spinning in this direction, it'll make this spin in the other direction. So, we'll see how that'll apply in a, in a minute. Like I said, it's going to be super ugly, but this is just a proof of concept. Um, and this will be a heavier thing. That The heavier these are, the more cubes you use, the more effective it will be at a lower speed. So you can, you, know, you won't have to have a really high setting for your velocity. Uh, so you can have more headroom, you can call it. Oh, I didn't group them correctly. See, I didn't select the right ones. So I just select these cubes and then I'll just delete these and replace them. You can also just regroup them by selecting the red group 
Um, but this is just the path I chose. And then double check, and they're all red. Same thing is going to have to happen with these. Q, group 1. Going. You can move an entire bot by hitting B. So I'm going to bump this up so there's a little more room. There you go, really good hunk of uh, bricks there going on. Um, you want to make sure things when they rotate won't collide, and I can assure you this should be fine um, because there's a three difference, and the distance with the diagonal is not three, um, it's a little bit less than it. So, now let's actually configure this. This is almost ready to go. So, you go and select setup, which is the four. And for this one, uh, before we actually get into it, hit tab. This is where all these interfaces are. You go to assign. And what I have done is I set up some custom controls for this uh, so that you can achieve different effects. So, of course, you have move forward, back, left, and all that. Your WASD, typical. I have changed move up to... Oh no, I've kept it space and left shift. Um, now this is where it gets a little bit interesting. You can, you know, you can take these into y'all, but what I have done is I've used my numpad because I have a, a keyboard with a num, you know, numpad on it, but you know, some laptop users, you might not have that. Um, I have assigned a second set of WAST, like, you know, front left back and right to here and I call it ground forward, ground back, ground left, ground right and this is correlating to the uh, numpad so that you can have the same setup for your right hand and this will control yaw and such which is where you basically turn in the air um, I've also set up so I can like just move to like another key to hit fire Fire one and two. So these are all just you know key bindings. Set these up how you want. Plan it out before you actually start assigning things because it can get confusing and you're like, oh man, I don't have a control for something, and it'll just become a mess. So this is how I got it set up. You can try different things. Let me get out of here. So this will be for rolling. So this is going to be my A and D keys. I prefer the setup. So I'm going to go hit 4 and I'm just going to select those uh, turn left and turn right because that's what they're binded to if you remember. So that's how you can know you know what's going on there. Um, then you take that and so like remember what I said if I want to turn like left. This is the see how this is the front of it. If I want this thing to like roll to the left, that means that this has to roll to the right. So if you look at this, that's a negative value because if you look at the see the two spinning things. If I want to make this roll to the right, then this would have to turn this direction, and that would be a positive value. See that? So I would make turn right a positive value, you know, I wouldn't set it too high. Turn left would be the opposite of that. So we can just take that right in the test mode. If any if anything's blinking, it means something's broken. But this is set up fine right now. And so you'll see see how you can twist the whole thing left and right. 
I mean, I know it's touching the ground right now, but it'll work in the air as well, because it's also inertia based. So yeah, it's not touching the ground right there, and it's still... There you go. So that's how you know it's working. Same thing for left, or front and back. So this is your pitch control. So this is going to be my W and my S key. Uh, so kind of my preference again. But you can set up it how you want. So let's go to four. And this is my move forward and my move back. Same concept applies here. If I want this to pitch forward, then this has to go in reverse. So again, we can see how that applies here. Actually, in this case, forward would actually be a negative value because we want the body that it's connected to. See this body right here? And the one closest to it, if we want it rotating in this direction, it would be negative because of the direction that the the spinning thing closest to us is going the other way. So that means positive is that direction, but we want it going the other direction or forward. So this will be a negative value. I'm going to set this pretty high because it's a pretty long craft. Um, I don't have it in the center. Ideally, you want these kind of things to be as close to the center as possible, but you know, for the sake of right now, it's not too uh, much of a problem. Make sure this is all set up right. Yeah, 46, 46. Um, and then we'll test it out, and you'll see that you can get some pretty good control again. There you go. See how it's almost defying gravity? There you go. Front and back controls, left and right. Alright, next thing is we are setting up the shaft, which is a basically a wing. So we're going to set those all up. And what's nice is, for convenience sake, I know there's a lot here, but you only have to set up one per rotor like one line and then you're done you can apply it to the rest of them because they're all the same so let's get these going now a weird thing happens when you do things like front to back and on the side it'll flip them you'll see when i apply them see how those are now sideways so it's kind of annoying it'll it'll do that i'll show you how i fix that real quick but this just makes sure all of our rotors are the same size. So for these, you go back in this, you know, we're in setup, of course, before, and then you twist it 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Apply, apply, and you're set. And then, these are supposed to be for angles, so notice how these are different color than that. These won't actually keep turning when you hit the keys for them. So what I have set up for that is um, you go into my assigned keys. I actually have my arrow keys set up for different powers. So power up, power down, power medium. And um, this is so you can get a little bit more control for your up and down. So we're going to assign that to um, right here. Let's do the lower one first. So this rotor is going to be turning this direction. Neutral means it's just going to go that fast. And so because it's going in that direction, these need to pitch in a way such that um, the wing is pointing up. So this would be a, po a positive value for the correct pitch. So we're just going to set um, power up to a, the, the highest angle that would work, which is 45 degrees. 
you need to take that and you're gonna hit the middle click and apply it to all of these. Same thing for power down, make that zero. Uh, make this power medium, you know, middle ground. And then you just apply them to these. It's going to have to be flip flopped for the top because they're going to be rotating a different direction. And then for more control, these will be for the shift and the space key for move up and down. So you can get some really fine movement. So of course this is going to be a small positive value and this is going to be a small negative value. And this will only be when you actually use the up and down keys. So take that, apply to all, and you're done. Um, and then we can just apply it up here real quick. So we'll have to flip these over at the signs. So this is now going to be negative 10. This will be positive 10. And then this will, you know, be negative 45. And negative 20. So, of course, apply that to the rest of the top ones. And then the outer ones do the same thing. Now, a way you can check to see if your wings are all good is you can hit the Z key, and it will show you that what your robot will actually look like when you're in the game. And there you go, or your machine. So, now we got to set up the motors. This one is going to be 50. I know I said 100, but uh, this will have to be 50. And then this one will be counter rotating in the opposite direction at twice the speed. Uh, so this is going to be negative 100. This is so, this is rotating 50 in uh, the positive direction. And then this is 50 minus 100, which is negative 50. So it's rotating the same speed in the opposite direction. So you get, uh, you won't be twisting from left to right down here but you can control that with this one. So this is your yaw control. And this was going to be with the right numpad thing that I talked about earlier. So ground left, ground right. Um, and this will of course be the same concept. If I want this to turn left and this to turn right, um, See, if I want the whole helicopter of the yaw to the right, this will be a positive value. And this will be negative. Alright, let's go into test mode and see if this all works. So, as you can see, there's my yaw control from left to right. Here's my pitch control from the back left the right roll and then for taking off I'm gonna put it in medium mode and I'm slowly taking off and you should be able to lightly control your craft in the air as you can see now uh, the left shift and the right shift should be able to lightly control your lift but as you can see I'm kind of floating to the right because I have a little more weight on it so then we can adjust that so let's say you have this problem after you have everything laid out and it's just you don't really want to rebuild anything you just you want to change the setting so because this likes to float to the right and I don't want to add anything um, I can change this neutral state here to counter rotate always to uh, make sure that doesn't happen so this was going to the right, so to counteract it, I want it to go to the left. 
and for that that will be a neg negative value so let's try a small value like 10 or you can also use the scroll wheel which is why I recommended it, it makes things a lot easier and then when we take off again this will always be rotating but as you can see it's pre it's staying upright pretty well but now it's rotating a little bit too much to the left so we gotta dial it down a bit let's go up to seven take off and there you go pretty set there you go there's your left and right movement um, your your yaw control and then you can go up really fast or you can go down and there's all your movement so there you go that's the end of the helicopter tutorial